Errol Spence Jr., Terrence Bud Crawford. I'm going to break it down. This is your boy, JG. This is the Punch Report. Let's go. Like I said before, y'all, welcome back to the channel. This is your boy, JG. This is the Punch Report. Please be so kind. Like, subscribe, bell icon for notification. We do the best boxing breakdowns you've ever seen or heard. This is your boy. All right, let's get right into it. Like I mentioned before at the top, Errol Spence Jr. coming off of his dominant, brutalizing victory over your Dennis Ugas. Shout out to him. Uh, rest up, get better. Um, he takes on or looks to take on. I'm going to go ahead and say takes on. Uh, Terrence Bud Crawford. Hold on, let me check this real quick. Terrence Bud Crawford, because all signs point to yes. Point blank, period. Arrow, he got shirts already. Uh, his social media is looking crazy. And we know that Terrence Crawford has wanted this fight for quite some time. Uh, at this point, I think he was probably just holding out just to see who would, you know, get the W, Ugas or Spence, um, and then fight the winner. But this was best case scenario. Now, first and foremost, for those who have seen my breakdowns before, you know we do a pretty good job. We're throwing our approach and we try to provide very unbiased, um, factual information, something that's easy to measure, something that's tangible, something that we can all put our eyes, ears on and kind of digest. How I'm gonna do this breakdown for Spence and Crawford is I'm gonna do it in three parts. Today's part is going to be on the offensive weapons that both these gentlemen possess. Uh, within the three categories of uh, the jab, body punching, and finishing ability. Um, and before I get into the breakdown, if you are a Spence fan, great. If you are a Crawford fan, great. I'm going to ask you to take a moment and turn the volume down on your fandom for these two combatants. Because I'm just going to give you the real numbers, examples, clips, photos, all that. Um, and so, like I said, offense on this one, my next video will be defense and my third video will be putting it all together and then providing my prediction. Um, I don't know when that last one's going to come because this is a lot of tape that we're running through. And uh, I want to make sure that when I do put this out there, like I have in the past, that we get it right. And if we don't get it right, we're at least getting it close to right. So without further ado, Errol Spence Jr., Big Fish Man Down, Terrence Bud Crawford, Omaha's very own. Let's go. Uh, this is the breakdown. We're gonna start off with a jab. Both these gentlemen know how to utilize a jab, but there's going to be a major discrepancy in this fight or leading up to this fight or within this fight. I essentially refuse to believe that somehow uh, Bud Crawford's gonna come in and be able to take away the jab of Errol Spence Jr. I have for you some disturbing numbers, then we'll get into the technical deployment. Um, in Errol Spence Jr.'s last four fights here are the punch discrepancies um danny garcia was uh yeah danny garcia was 84 to 19 in favor of errol spence uh, mikey garcia was 108 to 21 in favor of errol spence your dennis ugas was 24 to 19 um in favor of errol spence and then sean Porter was 37 of 30 in favor of errol spence those four fights um spence was able to win the battle of the jab obviously we know with ugas and Sean Porter, the way those fights broke down, sure, you could have played it safe and boxed, but the, the challenge presented itself differently. Ugas, both Ugas and Porter were willing to go in there, go right into the fire and, and trade blows with uh, Errol Spence Jr. And we already know that was not a recipe for success. Ugas is scheduled for surgery if he hasn't had it already for his eye. Confirmed busted nose, confirmed busted ribs. Um, Sean Porter got dropped late. If you look at the overall punch stats for Sean Porter, Errol Spence Jr., they don't look good anyway. Um, it was a competitive fight. It was actually a split decision. But if you go back and rewatch it, check those numbers. It, it was an easy score for me, in my opinion, for Errol Spence Jr. Now, here's where it gets interesting and different for Terrence Bud Crawford. If you look at these numbers for him, Bud Crawford against Kell Brook, 16 to 14. But we know that fight ended in round four. Uh, Sean Porter was 33 to 12 in favor of Crawford. Um, and Mean Machine was 24-28 in favor of Mean Machine. Even though he has a highly effective jab, he does not deploy it a lot. We'll get into overall output too because we know that's been a hot topic. Um, 
but it's something to pay attention to. Now let's talk about the technical technical deployment. For my money, Terrence Bud Crawford has the snappier, uh, prettier jab, right? When you see him throw it, it looks like this dude's work on this jab hella. He has variety in his jab. Um, he has a step across jab, flick jab. Um, sometimes he'll throw a power jab in there. But what he uses a jab for primarily is to just create distance, measure, and really kind of draw you into making a mistake. When it comes to Errol Spence Jr., he has a true power jab. And he has the jab where he checks all three boxes, measuring, distracting, and damaging the opposition. I have a short that I've posted uh, to my channel. I'll put the link in the description. You guys check it out, where you get to see a beautiful example of Errol Spence pushing the jab through Jordanus Ugas' entire guard, shielding his vision, and then deploying that left uppercut and breaking his face, a la Kamaru Usman. Shout out to Kamaru Usman. That is the best utilization of a jab that you're probably going to see in boxing today where you're being deliberate. I'm going to put this in your face, shield your vision, and then crack you. And it, it, it's a sight to see. Um, the other thing with jabs, like I mentioned before with the output, Errol Spence throws a jab when given the opportunity at a ridiculous rate. Against a guy like Terrence Bud Crawford, it's going to be interesting to see if he can figure out a way to stymie that. Because the other issue that Terrence Crawford runs into is he struggles to initiate offense on his own. He's a counter-punching savant. We'll get into that in the next segment with the body punching. But from a general perspective, he's a counter-punching savant. If he is put in a position where he has to initiate offense himself, at times it slows or stalls or he struggles to find his shots or opportunities. But getting back to the jab, for my money, I think the more effective jab, um, the more prevalent jab, the jab that I have the mo most say so in this particular fight, will lean towards Errol Spence Jr. Just because evidence has already suggested that's what it'll be. I can't imagine it changing dramatically just because the opposition is Terrence Buck Crawford. That's a lot of information on the jab, but it's important information because it sets up everything for both combatants, what they get thereafter. So, you know, that's just something to think about, something to ponder. Let's move to the next, uh, the next um, component of the offense. It's going to be body punching. Now, this is exciting for me to talk about because... You have two combatants, Bud Crawford, Errol Smith Jr., who are savants at body punching. But this breakdown is kind of dope because I get to get kind of be creative with it. I think about Terrence Bud Crawford. When you see him go to the body, check, take a look at the clips here. When you see Bud Crawford go to the body, it's more like a dagger, right? Early stage rounds, he catches you, he counters you, he just rips a shot right to the solar plexus. Maybe he goes to the liver but it's just enough to get you to start bleeding. Just a dagger shot, just to get you to start bleeding. And right away, it might not mean much to you, but round four, five, and six, a la Mean Machine, who was doing great, and then the body punches started to add up, and he just really lost a lot of his momentum, five, six, seven, then he gets stopped later in the fight. Anyway, when it comes to Terrence Crawford's body punching, it's just that dagger that he puts on you. Just below the chest bone, the chest plate there, the sternum, right to the solar plexus, to either side of the body, and it just adds up slowly over time. Uh, transversely, if you think about Errol Spence Jr., it's a baseball bat. Shout out to Carlos, Carlos Ocampo, which was his last stoppage before he stopped Jordanus Ugas this past Saturday. One First round, one shot, uh, right hook to the body, I believe it was. It gets him out of there. Now we've seen kind of transformative power from Errol Spence where you're busting up body parts, um, and making the opposition reconsider should they have taken this fight. Both of these shots and the way they're delivered are highly effective. Errol Spence is going to damage you and possibly hurt you or drop you much earlier than a Bud Crawford. But if you go any extended period of time with a Bud Crawford and his body shots are on, and take a look at the clips here against Sean Porter, it starts to add up. Sean Porter was getting hit and countered the body from round one. This fight really ended in round eight because... The 12, pounder punch, 12 power punches that Crawford landed were all ridiculously clean, like nothing blocked or parried or slightly caught. Round eight is when Sean Porter was out of there. We know the fight got stopped in the 10th, but it all started with Terrence Crawford countering so viciously to the body with that counter left hand. Uh, he was just ripping it. Every chance he got, when you saw Sean Porter overcommit, one foot in front of the other, Terrence Craw Crawford subtle step back, yeah, rips the shot to the body, and starts the process over again. There are some things that Sean Porter did well in that fight, but when he was uh, swim stepping, if you guys don't know what swim stepping is, is when you, instead of leading with your hand and lead foot, you have Sean Porter throw the lead hand 
and then take one foot, place it in front of the other, swim step um, with his head down, bend over to his right, over his right knee. And Crawford just sees that shit and counters him to the body, puts water in the basement, shout out Teddy Atlas. And then after a while, you lose your vigor, you lose your steam, Terrence Crawford puts a bead on you and ends up being a wrap. Shout out to Sean Porter. But for my money, thinking about these combatants going up against each other, I don't know if it's a break even because if if Bud Crawford gets caught something nasty in the body, it might be time to take a knee. He did get dropped by Kavioskis, but that was a headshot. I know they didn't count it, but that he did get dropped. But it's a scenario where you just don't want Errol punching on you, knowing that he's going to break a rib or possibly push into a lung or, you know, bruise your sternum. It's just not a good look. But for Bud Crawford, if you look at the Ugas fight, and I'm not talking about the mouthpiece shot, but Ugas was able to get effective shots on the inside on both sides of Arrow's uh, torso that made Arrow think for just a bit. But Arrow was a, a man's man, bit down, did his thing, continued to press forward, and put so much damage on Ugas. Anything that Ugas did, it just didn't matter. We know that Ugas came away from that fight very damaged. Arrow can probably fight in two weeks. It is what it is. So from a body punching perspective, I would give the nod right now to Arrow, but that doesn't mean Terrence Crawford is not a specialist at it because I think for me, it's one of his most underrated attributes and the way he knifes those shots in there, it immediately starts to take life away from the opposition and put him in a position to start making mistakes, Sean Porter, and eventually getting stopped. That's a beautiful segue and transition into our last offensive category that we'll cover in this particular video, and that's going to be going to be the ability to finish. Now, I mentioned with Errol Spence Jr., he hasn't stopped anyone since Carlos Ocampo, which was a tremendous stoppage first round body shot until he just brutalized, demoralized, and destroyed your Dennis Ugas. Before then, all decisions, one split decision with um, Sean Porter, everything else, unanimous decision. So Mikey, Gar Mikey Garcia, Danny Garcia, uh, Sean Porter was the split decision, stoppage by Ugas, and then uh, stoppage by Ocampo. That doesn't mean he's not a brilliant finisher. And the argument would be, well, if you look at Bud Crawford, he stopped everyone that he's fought at welterweight. Benavidez, Horn, Khan, um, Kel Brook, Sean Porter, he stopped everyone. But then we would say it was either Arrow's leftovers, right? Or it was just far lesser competition. And I agree with that sentiment, but you still have to go out and do what you need to do. So for me, if a guy's supposed to put a guy away and he goes out and does that, that's what he's supposed to do. Now, where I would ask questions is like, uh, uh, what's his name? Gar uh, Ryan Garcia situation where we know he's supposed to blow away uh, Emmanuel to go. And he goes out there and it goes a distance. You're supposed to blow this guy away. He's tailor made for you to destroy. So if, you, if we say, well, Terrence Crawford should run through Amir Khan, then he does. For me, Terrence Crawford is doing exactly what he needs to do. But I'm not going to sit and pretend that he doesn't have a lesser resume than Errol Spence right now. For my money, though, the guy who can pinpoint precision punch and get somebody out of there, I'm going to lean towards Terrence Crawford. Two of the best examples for me are going to be Sean Porter, who he set up brutally with counter shots. And then before that, at 140 pounds, um, John Molina. John Molina, tough guy, power puncher, vacillated between 140 and 147. Uh, he took on Crawford at 140 and... He got fucked up. It is what it is. I'm definitely putting the clip in here. Take a look at it right here. The closing sequence in this bout is one of the worst I've seen in boxing from a finishing perspective. And I know one-shot knockouts are the best-case scenario. Like, you just get dropped. Like, damn, what happened, EJ? Oh, he got me with a good shot. Yeah, I'm laying on the ground or whatever the case may be. But if you get turned into that big five sporting goods, 200-pound heavy bag that everyone buys and brutalizes in their garage, that's what... Terrence Bud Crawford did to John Molina. He turned him into a heavy bag and demoralized him and brutalized him. He does that. The Benavidez stoppage was cool. Um, Amir Khan, he's a punk. So, you know, shout out to him. And, you know, he really just brutalized um, uh, Jeff Horn. If you can do that to the opposition, then you do it to the opposition. You're not going to lose points because you kicked the shit out of somebody. So, finishing style points, I'm leaning towards uh, Crawford. If he's in a position or he observes that someone's turning away or they're not returning fire, he's coming at you full steam ahead. You look at the Kel, the Kel Brook one's a great one. He 
Kell Brook beat himself up. He took his face and knocked himself out uh, with a counter jab from uh, from Crawford. But after Weeks brings him back in, you good, you good, you got to show me something. When Crawford jumps on Brook, he's punching him like he's done something to him personally. You'll take a good look at the clips right here. Why you punch my man up? First of all, in the first knockout, he almost flies out of the ring. And then on the closing sequence, he's beating him like, he's just beating his ass like viciously. But anyway, we talked about the jab. We talked about the body punching and we talked about the ability to finish some of the key offensive attributes for both of these combatants. Um, Errol Spence Jr., Terrence Bud Crawford. Um, let me know what you guys are thinking so far. I'm not offering my prediction. The next one, we get into some of the defensive stuff. The third video for this installment, I'm going to do a little mini series. Um, it'll put it all together. Then I'll offer my prediction. But this is your boy, JG. I appreciate the time. Please, if you could be so kind, like the video. Let the algorithm know that you're feeling it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already. And if you have, tell somebody about, about it. And then hit that bell icon for notifications so you guys know when these videos drop. Like I said before, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment section. This is your boy, JG. This is a Punch Report. We out.